Hall based analog sticks have been the rage for the past few years or so, and Gully Kit, Gully Kit, however you're going to pronounce it, they have been the premier source for the types of hull based analog sticks that have been available. I think it made its first debut with the Ioneal handheld, so this is going back quite a few years. But there's a lot of reasons why hull based analog sticks are really nice. Specifically for me, I always like the linear type of tension that is felt throughout the entire stick. The types of caps that Gilly Kit usually has on their types of joysticks, their preferred ones. So you'll see those on the their King Kong Pro type of controllers. What's nice about these replacement sticks is that if you were to ever have any type of controller that had stick drift, this is largely a bigger problem, I think, pronounced on the Switch side of things. Now, Gilly Kit, Gully Kit, they have produced a different type of hull-based analog stick, and those are TMR. These TMR analog sticks were specifically designed by Gilly Kit to be adaptable for the Switch and DualSense controllers, specifically because they needed to be lower power, but also to have greater resistance to any type of interference. So these are what you're going to be required to be used if you were to adapt them for the Switch controller or the DualSense. It actually says the compatibility for those. And those two controllers I would say are arguably the biggest offenders of stick drift that we find on controllers that people often have problems with is Switch being number one and DualSense being another. Also the DualShock 4. Now, the one thing that we have to talk about is that Gilly Kit and Asus uh, did kind of work together so that Gilly Kit could produce hull based analog sticks that are compatible for the Asus ROG Ally X. So these work for the Ally X. Now, there's one thing that we have to kind of talk about is why would you get them for the Ally X? Is this a problem? Are you only going to get these for whenever you experience stick drift? And the reality is, on the Ally X with its own calibration software built into the Armory Crate software suite that Asus provides, that even if the official analog sticks that you have on the Ally X have a little bit of drift, you can actually correct that itself in its own calibration software utility. So even if you did have drift, it would have to be rather extreme for you to actually need to buy something to fix stick drift on your official sticks. The actual reason for why I think people might actually want to upgrade to these is that they are a more premium analog stick. This is immediately noticeable when we take a look at the full range that is available to us on the original ally sticks. Now you can see that we can get somewhere outside of the circle. Now let's back up a second. Perfect circularity is something that I think Gilly Kit is largely guilty for in so far as kind of pushing the narrative that perfect circularity is uh, uh, desirable. It isn't. It's just that it's good enough. But more to the point that Gilly Kit has shown that the engineering side of things can make it so that it's a perfect circle. Like they can design it so that it's a perfect circle. And what happens is that when we compare the range of the original sticks to the Gilly Kit sticks is that we have accurate range on both sides of the stick and they are for all intents and purposes even between them so really that's what it's coming down to is that the reason you would want to upgrade to these this is a premium upgrade for the Ally X it's not necessary but it does offer even range and more range on both of the sticks. So let's go ahead and jump into the how-to guide for how to install, and I recorded my own footage here. Now, one thing that I would recommend is the plastic inserts that you find inside of the box for the Gila Kit Premium Update Kit. Those can actually be used as stands that you can place on the glass itself to elevate the handheld off the surface of the table of whatever you're working on, because those analog sticks would be the only thing that are holding the, the handheld up. And because we're going to be removing the analog sticks, that's going to come crashing down. So we do want to have something that could hold the handheld up. You can use the own plastic inserts that are there. I just layered both of them. And then you can go ahead and start removing the analog sticks themselves. Now, before that, there's six screws on the back. I would recommend that you keep them in order of how you are taking them out. It should be noted that on the middle bottom screw that there is a little uh, retention clip so that it cannot be fully removed. This is so that you can reinsert it and kind of guide everything back in. But that bottom middle screw is going to be the one screw that is going to be the one that will not actually fully put up, pull out. Once you remove all, once you have unscrewed all six screws, I came in and pried through the analog stick part. So you just need a little bit of purchase in there. It's advisable to use something like a hard plastic instead of a metal so that you don't scrape or scar the 
shell of the handheld itself. Once you pry at that a little bit, you'll actually start undoing the clips. From there, you just wanna work along the outside of it and slowly pull it out. You wanna slowly pull it out because these macro buttons that are on the back of the device, there is a ribbon cable that has a ZIF, a zero insertion, a zero insertion force connector that is connecting this back plate, these, these two buttons, to the handheld itself. There is a lot of purchase there. There's a lot of leverage there. So you can kind of splay it out. Technically, you don't even actually really need to remove that to get to the analog sticks, but you can indeed, I'll show you which one that I did. There was a little bit of tape on mine, so I just undid the tape. And then you just pick up uh, the little lever on the zero enforcement, uh, the zip socket, and then you can just pull out the cable. From there, we just have to go ahead and remove the three screws for each analog stick. Now, one thing to note is that the back screw plate will use a Phillips zero screwdriver set, but on the internal of the analog sticks, it's gonna be a Phillips triple zero. It's a kind of a smaller Phillips head. That's the type of uh, bit that you should be using for the analog sticks themselves. Once you go ahead and remove those three screws, again, remember the placement of how they are because the screw sizes will differ. Once you do that, there is another ZIF in uh, another ZIF connector. Go ahead and unclip that to remove it. Now, what's nice is that the Gilly Kit sticks themselves are labeled with left and right. So they are also pretty much form fitted. So you, you can't really mess it up. You can't put the wrong one in the wrong slot. So it is nice that it's labeled. In any event, go ahead and plop them in. Uh, you do have to remove the analog stick topper from the original uh, Asus RG Ally X analog sticks and put those onto the Gilly Kit ones. So they will have the same type of top. From there, what you can do is then just go ahead and slip it back in, screw it down, reinsert the connector, and do the same for the other side. From that point, you just go ahead and put the clips back on, you put the back case back on, clip it all together before you start screwing them all in, and then put all the screws in and start screwing them all down. One other thing to keep in mind is that it seems like Asus has some type of mechanism to know when this is open to kind of kill power to the device. So when you put it all back together, make sure you power it back up. Uh, so plug it in before you actually power it on and then you can go ahead and power it on. Now, at that point, your job is done. The how-to guide is almost over. There's only one other part that we need to address here is that when I put it back on, technically I had stick drift. Uh, the thing is though, is because we're going to be using the built-in calibration utility to recalibrate the hull based analog sticks from Gilly Kit on there, we'll just go ahead and use that the Asus's own built-in calibration tool to recalibrate the sticks. And then you just go ahead and follow the directions exactly as it stays. Now, it's important to note that when you can see that it's a little bit off-center, you do not want to recenter it and then press A. Leave it off-centered, but the, the console flat when you are recenter or when you're recalibrating it. So just go ahead and press A, hold A, and then just follow the directions, push right down, left, up, and then do a circular motion on each analog stick. Once you do that, you have to do left and right. At that point, everything is fully calibrated. And if we compare the before and after, we can see that the analog sticks that I had on my Asus RG Ally X were fine enough for gaming. There are not gonna be any particular problems, but you can see that we do indeed have not perfect range on both analog sticks. And in fact, they both exhibit different types of behavior between both of them. But after I calibrated the hull based analog sticks on from the Gilly Kit, we have pretty much an even type of range between both of them. On top of that, the Gilly Kit analog sticks themselves do have a different uh, form of tension because of the potentiometer-based analog sticks that are on the Asus RG Ally X. They have a different feel. As you are pushing more, there's like less tension. One of the things that I really love about hull-based analog sticks is that there's an even amount of tension regardless of how much distance you've already put on the stick. So, it basically what this all comes down to is can I recommend Gilly Kit's hull based analog sticks for the RG Ally X? And ultimately, the answer is it's very much not needed at all. This is, for all intents and purposes, a premium upgrade. I would suggest that if you have any particular problems with the analog sticks on your Asus RG Ally X, to use the calibration software first and then see how you feel about it. I would argue that that is likely to fix your problem completely. That being said, if you wanted to do a premium upgrade, I'm happy that I do have these in my Asus RG Ally X and they are nicer. I like them a lot better, but it isn't necessary by any means. Thank you very much to my YouTube channel members as well as my Patreon members. Your support really means the world to me, guys. I hope this video was informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.